guys. Jack box from your best. I'm gonna assume this is the top. It's very well packed. I didn't see any damage as far as the box is concerned. I've read other people have issues with shipping and they just arrive damaged and pieces are flying all over the place, but this looks pretty good. Yep, this comes in one piece. Everything is metal. All these are metal. The CR10 is famous for being a big printer. So this looks like the base. So what's left in the box is the controller, a box of goodies. Oh, they give you tape even. <laughs> That's interesting. They give you yellow tape. Some sort of uh, manual. But it almost doesn't look like there's going to be any need for instructions. Just need to put it right there. Let's see what else is in the box. USB. Oh, all kinds of tools. Clips. Allen wrenches. Oh, even a spatula. Nice. This is for the uh, spool holder. Tiny spool of filament. Ooh, this is metal. For the spool holder. US power. You can specify European, of course. Extra nuts and bolts. Warranty card. And I think these are if you strengthen the uh, gantry. Ooh, that was sharp. If you got an issue with the nozzle, I guess. PTFE tube for the Bowden. And a USB. That's it. The instruction doesn't tell you to do this, but I've heard people are having loose screws. So I checked them all, and so far, they're all pretty tight. Yeah, that's pretty wobbly. Yeah, it wobbles all over the place. So supposedly some of these screws are off center. So by loosening them and tightening them, we will be able to tighten it. Okay, got it fixed. What I try to do is such that when you're moving this, every one of these rollers are actually moving and they even resist as you're doing this. The most important thing is of course now this is no longer wobbly, very smooth. So I use the uh, packing material so I can access the screws from here. That's the extruder, should be in the front. Yeah, it's still pretty wobbly, but four screws are in there so it's not going to come off. That works pretty well. And we can tighten these. I don't know if I mentioned it earlier, but all the tools came with this. So far, the only tool I have to use is the box cutter to open the box. beginning to look like a 3D printer. Even before you put in these stabilizers, it's already pretty sturdy. Let me show you. I mean, I could probably lift this up with this in there. I mean, it is really sturdy. But let's put this on. So these guys here basically lock onto the uh, channel of the uh, extrusion. Okay, vertical and keep this one horizontal and I think it should just go in there yep so this is the right wrench again flat on the bottom vertical So wiring is next. Two wires coming out of the printer and then a whole bunch of wires coming out of the uh, control box. And they're all labeled pretty well. So that's a Z, that's a Y, and so on and so forth. And these two have different number of uh, pins. Plug in onto the back here so you can't plug it in wrong. And the only other thing that you have to watch out is that it is international so make sure this matches your country. I'm in the US, so I set mine to 110. And that's it. That's all the wiring. So let's hook it up. The one with four pins goes in the bottom. It's very well built. I mean, this thing's not going anywhere. Okay. Well, the wiring is pretty simple. 
The only thing that might be confusing is even though the wires are labeled, the places where these wires go to are not labeled. So looking from the front of the printer, that's the x-axis that moves it that way. So that's this motor will move that belt back and forth. So that's x. And then the stop for that x is over here. So that prevents this x-axis when it hits here. So, and then the uh, y is going this way, back and forth is y. And the motor for that is on the back. So that's y. And the end stop for y, when the uh, bed hits it, it will hit this switch right here. And finally, for the z, is the one that goes up and down. So that's z down there. And the end stop for the z is on the other side. You know, when this goes down, it will hit this end stop over here. Yeah, one last one is the extruder, which do not have an end stop. So that's just the E for extruder. Okay, guys, first print. I'm sure it will not even stick. Okay, it's all heated up. Here it goes. Very first print. Oh, look at that. It's a little bit right there. Okay, we'll see if we stick. It looks like it might stick. <laughs> no, it didn't stick. I didn't think so. Okay, that's a board. Stop print. Oh, it stopped dead. Stop right there. I thought it would like home or anything, but I guess not. So, to do that, you can control everything manually by hand. Prepare. Both axis. The Z axis is for safety, I suppose it only moves like one sub millimeter at a time. So I'm turning the thing clockwise and moving that up very slowly. So I might have to put something underneath there to make it bow up a little bit. Well, apparently I have the nozzle way too close to the bed because what happened was it started creating something over here that is kind of like a protrusion and then it shifts it, it moves it. It sticks pretty well. As you can see this, it's sticking pretty well. But what's interesting is why after it, it failed this and then it moved it, it started printing whatever layer it's on and that layer actually still sticks. That layer there is supposed to be on top of this layer here. So I think I better bring the nozzle up a little bit. Well, after uh, I think it was a third failed print because it wouldn't stick, I gave in to a uh, glue stick. Of course, it still works. The color difference is because I sped up the print, so half of it is printed at 100%. This half is printed about 150 and then I crank it up to 200 and then it couldn't keep up. It looked like the, there's some problem there, so I bring it back down to 150. 3D printing is amazing. There it is, one layer, uh, 0 0.2 millimeter thick. This is a piece of plastic that I just printed. <laughs> it's just, Unbelievable. So this side is what's on the glass, so it's very smooth here. And this side is what's actually being printed. You can kind of hear there's texture there. Uh, so it was printing it, I think it was this way. Yeah, it was printing it this way when you saw it in earlier. But uh, yeah, the discoloration is all about the different speed that I was printing it at. And so it's just amazing. So Kira said it's going to be done in two hours, but it's been over three hours. Well, it looks like it's almost done though. And it is pretty amazing. So here's the tallest print I've ever done on this printer yet. That's a AA battery. And on the left is the test run, only like one centimeter tall. And here is the 40 centimeter tall. It did scrub a little bit on the top there, but considering how high it is, it is totally amazing. <laughs> Other than bed leveling, I really haven't done any adjustments to this printer, and it already prints amazing. But here are some improvements suggested by others more knowledgeable than me. I'll put a link to them in the YouTube description. 
These mount onto the existing hard-to-reach bed leveling knobs under the bed. It should make bed leveling a lot easier. This is a cable strain relief to protect the heated bed cable from getting damaged from all the bed movements. This is an improved version of the duct fan shroud. It changes the direction of the airflow so it would blow directly onto the part that's being printed rather than the nozzle. I think it's so cool that 3D printer could print parts to improve itself. There are many many more improvements but others have said that these are the essentials. So would I recommend this printer? It depends. As you saw, this is probably the easiest 3D printer kit you could build. However, it's not perfect. I wish it comes with automatic bed leveling and a little quieter fan, please. But if you're interested in printing something big, <laughs> the CR10 is hard to beat. I've seen some really amazing things. I'll put the links to these videos in the description. Gearbest also carry the siblings of the CR10. They have smaller, cheaper ones. And if this 300 by 300 by 400 is not big enough for you, they have even bigger CR10 models. Check them out. I'll put links in the description below. Full disclosure though, these are affiliate links, so thank you if you end up purchasing the CR10 using these links. And to those of you wondering whatever happened to the giant ping pong LED cube, I'm still working on it. <laughs> it's still not finished yet. I had a major setback. You could follow me on Facebook if you like the nitty gritty detail. Special thanks to Gearbest for sponsoring this video. Thanks, Karen. And of course, thanks to all of you for watching, liking, sharing, and subscribing. I'll see you guys next time. Bye-bye.